Hello and welcome to Parenting Today. My name is Rebecca Miruri Mulure. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, a nuclear family is ideal, but what if you found yourself parenting your children alone? Uh, parenting, single parenting can be as a result of so many reasons, you know. It can be the demise of your spouse, uh, it can be out of a separation, a divorce, but what if you found yourself? parenting your children alone that is our topic today single parenting and on set today is Mary Wanjiko uh, we also have Jed Gishuri who are parents they're going to tell us their journeys in this and we also have Pauline Wanjao a life coach who will be joining us later to put all this into perspective and we are going to learn from her and from you ladies welcome to the show Thank, Thank you. you. Looking lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with you, Jade. Yeah. Yeah, kindly tell us about yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having me, Rebecca. My name is Jade, as you said, Gishiri. I'm a mother of three. Uh, my oldest is 23, uh, son. Then I have, uh, I think they are, turning to, they are turning 20, wow, this year. So they are 19 and some months, uh, a boy and a girl. Um, Twins? Twins, oh, yes, awesome. yes, right. yes, fantastic, they, mm -hmm. they are lovely. And then, um, what else, I'm, I'm a therapist, uh, I'm a pastor uh, in one of our churches here in Kenya, and um, yeah, and I'm happy to be here. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. You're welcome. To and I've been parenting uh, as a single parent, yes. so to say, from an, uh, I was married, so it was a divorce, and uh, since the twins were three, so that's like, 16 mm. years, 15 16, years? Yes. 16 years ago. Yes, yeah. Okay, mm. welcome to the show. Thank you. To you, Mary. Uh, thank you. Uh, like you said, my name is Mary Wanjiko. I'm a mother of one daughter. She's uh, four years, four months now. Mm. Um, I'm really glad. And um, I became a mother because I met someone we had an intimacy and then I got pregnant and then they opted out, yeah. And you ended up uh, a single parenting yes, a single your, your girl alone. Yeah. Okay, so I want to come back to you, Jade. Yes. Um, so you said you have a 23-year-old and a 19-year-old, <coughs> yes. there are two. Yes. Um, at that time, tell me about it, like what was that journey like, you know, uh, raising mm. your kids mm. with your partner, like I said, you know, a nuclear family mm. is ideal from the word go. Mm. So how was it like, mm. and now coming out to when you started parenting them alone? So, I can't even say he was a fully involved uh, dad, uh, sort of emotionally. He tried, like, uh, whatever, but he was a great provider for them. Um, he didn't like in terms of material to provide for them. Uh, I think the challenge was the emotional side, so I did a heavy lifting that side before the marriage ended up uh, breaking up. As I said, there were only three, the youngest and the left, so it was a short time for us to parent together. Parent together. Yeah, so I do feel I parented them all alone. Basically alone. Mm, okay, mm. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Mm. How about you? Like, did you start parenting your, your girl from the onset, or was it... Uh, like tell me about that was it okay from the white coat yes um when i found out that i was expecting i had to mention to him of course um so i couldn't uh he never actually really was like a oh, wow we're pregnant he went quiet for a while he actually w had wished us to abort the child so when i refused uh he told me count me out of this and that time I was four weeks pregnant, so I would say from onset, the, mm. from onset, so from the pregnancy, from the pregnancy day, day one. Okay. Because yeah, I actually think that's where parenting starts. Yeah, you know, yeah. Mm. From, Even when yeah. you're, you're pregnant. True. Yeah, so from day one. From day yeah. one. Okay. So yeah. back to you, Jade. Um, yeah. uh, there you are, you have three kids at that time. Had you, did you have like an ideal way of how you wanted them? brought up, mm. uh, what kind of a family you wanted uh, yeah. to form with, with, yeah. with your partner then and, yeah. and the kids? Yeah, I actually did. I actually, um, well, I've written a book which explains how I ended up getting married and it was, I got pregnant. One of the reasons, uh, and I really did warn my children, we were still talking about marriage, but then I got pregnant, he wasn't averse to it, uh, he embraced it, and I didn't also warn my children to grow up without a dad. 
Um, but when I now say, if now I'm more honest, if I really think about it, um, I probably should not have married him. Because <laughs> the difference is that broke our marriage has nothing to do with the children. But we had some issues. There were some red flags that I had, he had, that should not have constituted to us being together. But then here we are, and I wanted to give my child, the first one at that point, uh, a father. And I wanted them to grow up in a home with two parents. I grew up in a home with two parents. So, I mean, it's the ideal, it's what we have been told. It, actually, it's not even ideal, it's in the word of the Lord yes. that he desires us to be in a, that kind of, a, the family unit, how he created it, was supposed to come through that way for the next generation to have a man and a woman. So, um, yeah, so we kind of lived together, then we decided, no, let's just get married, we already have one child. And then I, I prayed and asked God for more kids, so I did, pray and hope that we will raise our children together. Yes. Yeah. There was no thought that he, um, one day I would rather do it by myself. Yes. Yeah. I like it that you said um, that uh, you wanted them to grow up with a dad. Yeah, I did. But you know, sometimes it happens and, mm. you know, even in cases of the demise of, of, of yeah. a spouse, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, ended, you end up uh, raising the kids mm. alone. Yeah. So what happens in such cases? How mm. do you adjust now? Tell me yeah. about that. How, mm. how was it now from four weeks pregnant? Okay. Um, it was, uh, I wouldn't say it really shocked me. I had gotten to an age where uh, in terms of relationships, I think I had put out. So, but I think like they say, your tongue, your tongue, has power mm. so I kind of just talked about it in the office like hey next day I'm booking I'm booking for a maternity so I had told God if I'm not be married by 35 mm. I would really wish to have a child and having previously lost a child uh, there was that desire of you know owning mm. a child and looking forward to have one so I told God if I not be married by 35 I would really wish to have a child but I would it was not the way the child came that was not the plan. I would have wished, you know, even if there was no relationship, I love and support that a child deserves from the father. Yes. And now I think what I did for me, I immediately accepted. I actually faced it and immediately accepted that. Mm. Yeah, I think this is out and he didn't look like he was kidding about it. So I accepted. And from the one, there was no, I really say there was a lot of suffering, you know, there's a rejection part like my, my friend says here, there was a relationship. And since mine there was no relationship, um, mm -hmm. I took it on and yeah. Yeah, here mm -hmm. you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was that met by, let me talk about society because they're the biggest uh, <laughs> jury. <laughs> like I'd say, it's usually like a whole jury out there looking out yeah. for you like, oh, you want to raise this kid alone? Yeah. And here you are, like four years later. How was that? Mm. Uh, it was, uh, I think at that time I was, I was expectant uh, in terms of what the society would meet me, uh, and especially my family. Uh, the first person I called was my mom, and she was very encouraging in terms of that that is in your womb is not a mistake. There, mm. there's, no, there's no blunder about whatever is in your womb. And after that, of course, you know, having coming from a religious family, the, there's still that of Expectation. they should have come from her, okay? Then there was a talk in the office, she's expectant, who is the father, and, and things, there's a lot of stories. I was actually given so many fathers, because I'm quite a quiet person in terms of my personal life, to my social life. So, and I think from that day, the journey is still now up to here. Who is the father or the father <laughs> or oh, I think this is the father and it was not easy at that time because I had to deal with this new thing already your body is adjusting to what is happening yes. and then you're alone having to deal with all that alone mm -hmm. but I think that time I met a colleague of mine who really helped me to go through the mm -hmm. questions as in those everyone was talking about who is the father and I'm like he's not even there anymore yeah. <laughs> and you have to mix all that and having to fix all the friends maybe the guys who were hitting on me then and i was very scared maybe i'll not win love or some all those emotions coming and having to be able to to accept that i'm expectant of a child yeah. so it was not easy at all okay. but i would say it it was it was a learning place yes. yeah 
that, that there's no, there was no, there's no out. Yes. And for me, there's that dark space of mind that having gone through a previous loss, that this is a blessing anyway. It was, a, it was mm. yeah, and there was no, there was no way out. Oh. I actually didn't mind about anything. Yes. There was no way out. I'm going to have a child. So it was like a perfect mm. scenario yeah. for it. So mm. Uh, mm. Jade, yeah. back to you, and you know you're there, and it's three kids now. Yeah. How was the? How was that like? You know, starting to. Now you have to take care of them. Mm. Uh, was it was it like a planned um, co-parenting or was it like solo parenting? Like you decided mm. like, to take up the kids and what? Yeah. yeah, it was quite tough. I think one of the the things that came out very clearly is that uh, my ex wasn't interested in co-parenting. Um, so. From day one, I mean, he tried once, twice, but uh, it, it didn't work. So actually from very early on, I think he, we have never co-parented. To tell the truth, I could say the year we left and then he saw them a few years ago, 2018. So we didn't co-parent. I have done it uh, <laughs> by God's grace. And um, I think with the, an awesome village and, mm -hmm. and my family. My parents were amazing and still amazing. I think they are the ones who have co-parented with me. <laughs> they supported you. <laughs> Actually, those are my co-parents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are, <laughs> those are the co-parenting. Co yes, co yes, yes. Because when my marriage ended, because it was very hard, I was very disoriented. Like it was so hard, I couldn't believe I'd failed in marriage that yeah history, you know? oh my yes. word then i got guilty i couldn't believe i've put my kids through such a thing so the guilt of them yeah. coming to ask me they come from school people asking where is my dad those questions and seeing them desiring it Aish, it's very hard it was very challenging so i moved closer to my parents uh, which helped a lot which helped a lot but it didn't stop the questions and the ongoing conversations about a father. Tunachora baba mama, a father. Yes. Yeah, so it was quite uh, been a challenging, wonderful. Is it possible to say both? Yes. Yeah. Challenging, amazing. And wonderful and amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing them up. And that's the truth. Exactly. Mm. Uh, you know, I have a five-year-old, yeah. so she comes home with this, you know, she'd come yeah. with this growing, like, oh, do mm. your nuclear yeah. family, mm. or get us a photo of your mm. nuclear family, so yeah. it has to be daddy, mom, and, mm. and then nowadays this child, so if there's no other child, then yes. it's not very ideal. You start asking you for a sibling, because exactly. <laughs> they're supposed to be another child. You know, mm. the societal mm. pressures and mm. the pressures that come from mm. other sources. Yeah. I'll just take a short break yeah. after which we'll continue talking to Jude and Mary. Yeah. Don't go away. Welcome back. You're watching Parenting Today. And today we're talking about single parenting. And on set is Mary Wanjiko and Jade Gishuri, who are narrating their journeys in this. And right now we're talking to Jade about mm. um, now taking care of your three children. Yeah. But your family came through. Oh, yeah. And talking about the community aspect, yeah. you know, how we always expect in the society, and especially here in Nairobi, mm. we tend to bring up our kids. Yeah. Uh, in a very in silos so yeah. to speak like you want to bring them up in your own way yeah. in your own house as opposed mm. to how we were brought up mm. I was also brought up by a village yeah. so you know not necessarily in this nuclear family yeah. what was the importance of that and how did that help yeah. you now to be able to parent your children in fact it wasn't a natural thing initially I wanted us to be cocooned because I was like first of all I'd had a uh, I was dropped by a friend or two because getting divorced, my kids are no longer invited. So that kind of rejection in your face from people you really trusted, who actually knew even the dramas you were having with your ex, eh? So it's not that they think I just walked out. Yes. 
And then of course, where we went to the neighborhood and the neighborhood, there's some neighbors would actually literally say, Ile Nyumba, that house without a, a man. So my kids, if they cause anything outside, especially my boys, mm -hmm. they'll say it's because there's no father. I actually got, I mean, I thought it was theory until I lived it. And I was fast, I couldn't believe. So I really did want to close us in to make us safer and just deal with my parents, my siblings. Um, but I must say at some point, I think it's, I think it's a lot. Because the other thing, let me, can I say it? The first thing that helped me with my change of how I'm going to parent is I got a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I decided I can't do this by my strength. I didn't decide. I think the Lord had mercy. And I ended up in a village, starting with even my church. And then amongst that, I had some very few close friends who hanged out with me. And I started realizing, okay, I can't do this by myself. I really couldn't. Um, and along the way, I've opened up myself to having a few people who are closed in. And I even got intentional of making sure I also don't just hang out with single parents. Mm -hmm. Because I realized my children also need to grow up seeing these other homes, these other families. Because when they're in class and they've been told boy, girl, nini, nini, dad, mother. But they that dad, mother, I went to the school. Every year, I'd go to the lower primary. I want you to understand something. These children are from me, single mom. So when you're teaching that, imagine, that school must remember me. <laughs> I used to rock in every year as I change class. Yes. Meet the class teacher, give my itinerary, and say, Mimi is a single mom. That one is from me as a single mother. Yes. The people you'll see is my sister, my mother, <laughs> my father, and myself. Yes. So I'm like, I, I didn't want them also to, so I, I allowed them to see I'm not embarrassed mm -hmm. to my children. I'm yes. not embarrassed that we don't have a dad. Because there's, there's yeah. always a lot of stigma. You can stigma your, that even you can stigmatize your own around children around by operating from a place of shame and feeling guilty. Yes. So, cause by, yani, I don't even, I can't explain that someone told me. I was just so conscious I didn't want them to grow stigmatized or feeling a certain way. So, I put myself in communities and the Lord gave me grace and um, yeah, so I've parented with communities. And then Did you ever feel the pressure like to mm. get them like a stepfather? Yeah. <laughs> First of all, from myself, yes. I'm like, I need the next man, I need the next guy, yes. they need a father ASAP. I did try that. If they are watching, I'm sorry. But I did try that. Yes. So and then I, there's this talk around the city and in churches. Mm -hmm. The statistics, my goodness, that uh, single parenting homes, especially single moms, all the children, quasi boys will be in jail. Me, when I started hearing the statistics now, I was like dying, dying dead. Yes. So, and then ha you have to get them a father figure. Have to get them a father figure, the society. Mm -hmm. Father figure, father, father figure. figure. So you're like, ananunuliwa wapi? Is it Tyson Carpet? Is it Atatoka wapi? How much money is this father figure? <laughs> So you frustrate yeah. yourself with those stories, or you even frustrate your own brother or relative, like, please, spend time with my boys, yes. spend time with my girl. Can you go? I'll pay you. And I did try to force that in a couple of years early. Then one day I was like, actually, that's not necessary. Because what the Lord showed me is that in every season of their lives, there are men I'm more, I have in my mm -hmm. life. Some have been there longer than before, and they don't need to be present in my house that you're doing things with for them. The, it doesn't the, have as, to be like a specific no, person no, for, 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 for all to, the time. Yeah. I'm yes. telling you even teachers. Sometimes when I even changed, I would go to, they were in this primary school, this pri they were, they had family. Me, I would go and tell the, the headmistress, Wangu siwaike kwa ile family is a lady leading. They have enough women yes. in their lives. What they need is a man's voice. Uh -huh. So put them, they were like, what? Do not put my children. Mm -hmm. Enough. Yeah, Coming, but, those small groups where it's led by a woman, I'm enough. Mama yao, shoshu yao, tuko wengi. So that after like a Tafta, men. Please put a male teacher. Ah. And then I talk, so I was deliberate and, was and really intentional. Deliberate. It was, okay. it was. And, yeah. and Mary, was mm. it the same case for you? Have you ever felt the pressure like, you know, your four-year-old needs mm. like a father figure, a man in her life? Um, I, I guess what happened for me, and I always like starting with the positive. Yes. Um, that that different from now up to now where I am, I had to survive a lot of rejection, mm. a lot of rejection from family. Mm. Who saying, just you know, run to your family, run to your. Sometimes that's not the best yeah, place true. to run to. So at some point, I found myself totally alone. 
okay so i had to to every day figure just figure out okay then there was also you know the stories from the family from the father they were like they know mm -hmm. but then the talk was bad it was more of of me being the the not the ideal person for that person that is why they're not in their child's mm. life but then i think my pillar and um was my twin sister mm. i have a twin sister and I, as, I was even i don't know why i actually mentioned yesterday and i was telling her i think from creation god knew why why he had to put us together because she never left everyone left totally when you say everyone left it comes to financially um emotionally there was more of you deserve that because you know mm -hmm. you're not the ideal child so and then so when my is like oh, sorry no, her her name. Name. Yeah, yeah, let me let me see her name <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. she's called mm -hmm. wema mm -hmm. so there was a lot of a lot of i say a lot of surviving rejection and i think i would take that positively because in a way it made me come back to myself Mm. come back to say because you know when a child comes you forget yourself totally it's it's not easy and then you actually have like you know saying the people you knew mm. they were your friends they were you know you're like you count on them that is when i used to hear uh, when i was young you know even the bible says your friends your family will live no literally living where actually they actually live in reality <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah and you're left alone mm -hmm. but then if there's something I, I also was very sensitive i uh, have grown stories of where you took your kid to your brother and something happened to them and her being a girl but then there was also no much invite of you know let her you bring the kid mm. you not you, you just come we'll take care of there was no i never Experience had that okay. apart from my two sister you know i yeah. i knew as long as she's there i'm okay and actually she's never left even to date mm -hmm. so there was that uh, this always through a hard time and what i've learned through a very hard time but then at the same time even during those hard time uh, i don't want to demonize her because uh, a child is still my daughter would keep me saying they say sometimes yes. when it gets so hard and, and yeah and you're actually losing it mm -hmm. you're literally losing it but then like okay get 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 yourself Sunny together, here. <laughs> get yourself together. <laughs> yeah jade for the 16 years did you ever um what, what are some of those areas that you've had to step up mm. now because we cannot we cannot really rule out the the role yeah. of men in mm. you know in in the children's life and, yeah. and maybe, you know even with the with the life coach later mm. we will talk about even men who are parenting by alone yeah. like by themselves mm -hmm, yeah. like what's the role of, of 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 the men that you had to step up in like what mm -hmm. are some of the roles that you had to step up in and and just figure out like i need to maybe become mm. harder on this mm. or you know just to ensure that at least they grow up with that mm. firmness that yeah. men would ideally have mm. yeah i think one of the things about single parenting is that you tend to find in balance to be both soft and hard yeah Six. <laughs> Being a mother what? and a father. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's not even mother and father. Let yes. me also say, there's no way I can be a father to them. Yes. I'm only a woman who's a mother and then I parent them. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance of my parenting to allow them to experience a balanced parenting. Either I'm not too soft or too hard. Mm. That, I think, is the hardest thing I've had to do uh, to find the balance of it. I've not had a problem of talking about dating with both sexes, with my girl and my boys. Um, I think the areas that, truthfully, I think I just embraced parenting. I just decided I'm the parent on the ground. Exactly. I'm the primary caregiver. I can have a conversation with them, like let's say during their circumcision. I may not take them. Uh, they were taken by friends, as I said, people stepped in, like now my last one. And then especially then, I would still have a conversation with him about it. My dad showed up, my brother showed up, mm -hmm. two other men came up, but I did not remove myself from the conversation. Exactly. So and I like I that did. you're talking about parenting. Yeah. You're still a parent, still whether, a parent. you know, whether, uh, and it's, a, it's an area that a lot of women and even men, mm, sometimes yeah. you, you leave out some parts to yeah. the man. Mm. 
and then one day you might actually just find yourself mm -hmm. parenting alone. Yeah. yeah. So what is yeah. the importance of, of uh, mm -hmm. embracing parenting, you embrace as, parenting. as a whole mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. In, ensuring that your, your children are yeah. catered for, like mm -hmm. you trying to also just provide for them. Yeah. Because sometimes I think we, we have our roles, defined yeah. roles. We, yeah. we keep them so much to, mm -hmm. oh, this is the role of this the is father, this is the role, role of, of the, the mother. Mom. My children even told me, you know, mom, uh, there's nothing you're telling us go tell uncle that we can't tell you. Whoa. I was so happy that comment in the teens. I was like, wait, because first of all, the society had told me, prepare, prepare, yes. teenagers are coming. So we already panicked. Wow. Then they asked me, why are you sending us to, I remember my older son telling me, this. why are you sending me to him? So you tell me what you think. Then I said, yeah. Then I asked him, do you have, I said, yeah, I have men I can go ask, but you, what do you say, ma'am? Wow. So I found that helps because from day one, I also, we kind of cultivated uh, con our friendship. Yes, yes. Have yes. you had to deal with hard conversations? I can imagine. <laughs> um, <laughs> right now, she's, uh, I say, four years, four months. Mm. She just joined school the other day. Mm. And then I was also told, you wait. They will, yeah. the, 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 the hard questions will come. Yeah. And actually, it's not very long ago mm. from buying something. And, Mom, can I ask you something? Okay, wow, shoot. Who's my dad? Mm. <laughs> it was so direct. I'm um, like, okay, yes. um, and because of what I know now, um, I give, I give, I give them the name of my partner now, mm. currently, mm. and they're like, for now, let's let's work with that. Can mm. we work? And, and you know, you have to talk to them like mm. they're as the, with the seriousness of the question that yeah. it is, mm. and then considering they are young, mm. but then in a coming, reassuring way, you know. Mm. But then I told her, but just one thing, you know, I usually have to sit and look at her in the eye. Mm. No matter what, you see this person here, mm. this is here, mm. and they love you, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. So, and I actually remember, I sat them and told her, actually, do you know their kids? who have no mommy and they have no daddy, mm. but they have people who love them. Yes. Do you yeah. know they're very happy, you know? So there's, there's a consideration like, mm. you know, orphans grow, but then I'll not use that word. It's not a word. And I was like, okay. She was like, so I could feel she was satisfied with that, with that, with answer. that answer. But then there's that also the, the, the questions you get. I think most of the time, sometimes the challenge of, of taking a full, you know, it's by default, okay? It's like when you lose a... a, a a spouse. spouse it's by yeah. default like you, you there was no negotiation about it it happened mm, yes but i grew up in such a home actually mm, yeah you take a short break okay. and then <laughs> you'll continue after right, that okay. so we're taking a short break but uh, after the break we're going to have pauline wanjao a life coach uh, who's going to give us more perspective into uh, single parenting don't go away Welcome back, you're watching Parenting Today. Today we're talking about single parenting. And uh, on set is Mary Wanjiko and Jade Gishuri, who are parents. Right now we are joined by Pauline Zhao, who's also a parent. Hi. And a life coach. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> I'm so who, glad to be here. Yes, yes, welcome. Welcome to the show. Asante. Is a child doomed if they are brought up by a single parent? Doomed? <laughs> That's a terrible word. Of course they are not doomed. Yes. Uh, Parenting is actually, um, it's actually about intentionality. There are people who live in homes where you people, you know, where the, the community calls are, and what did you call them, by the way? I, I was upset and I had you call, what did you call it? A, a nuclear, nuclear family, family with a mother, a father. You know, you know, we do this. Hello, can I, can I go on a small rabbit trail? Mm -hmm. Please don't believe everything you see on the internet of pictures of a father, mother, and two children. You know, some of the things that go on in those homes have nothing to do with intentional parenting. Intentional parenting is actually when a, a parent or parents or a, even a community are actually intentionally bringing up a child. They're not allowing the child to grow up like a weed. And children grow up as weeds in homes in that, have, homes, two, in that have two parents and a, and a house girl. <laughs> so, no. Children brought up by single parents yes. who are intentional, who are doing it with a clear, with a very clear purpose, who are doing it 
who are trying to do their best. They are not perfect, but they are putting in their best. Are far from doing it. There are many success stories of people who have been brought up by single parents, either men or female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So absolutely not. Yes. I am here to to confirm that yeah. they are not. They doomed. are not doomed. Yes. <laughs> I, I I wanted to bring that up because yeah. you see, society judges it as that. Um, I was talking to them earlier on about you know the society becomes the the, the, the jury in this case. You know you have to be. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, in a nuclear family, a child has been brought up in a nuclear family. Like, but like you say, sometimes they can't be brought up in that nuclear family that even has a house help, like as a caregiver, <laughs> but still not turn out uh, the way you'd expect uh, them to turn out ideally. So talk about uh, single parenting. Some of the challenges that, that, uh, that parents who are, who, are, who are bringing up their kids uh, alone face. And what are some of the possible what are the successes that that are in that space as well because it's i'm sure it's not just the challenges that, so, that people face it's it's challenging to bring up a child as two people so it's very challenging <laughs> to bring up a child alone yes first of all I, I tell people when you're a single parent you came out of something nobody woke up and wanted to be a single parent especially in this side of the world in the north people do plan to have you know, to be a single parent and be prepared but here most of the time i would say maybe even 90 over 90 percent of the time it is because of one something happened a failed marriage a divorce a separation somebody who just ran busted they abandoned you so you first of all as a single person you are dealing with your own issues but then now you have to now pick up yourself and very quickly bring up the child I think one of the biggest challenges is that the parent is already broken. A very broken parent. And when parents are broken, and especially when it's one of the parents who are broken, and they're the only parent who is available, then there's a lot of problems. Because that broken parent is probably going to be abusive. Maybe the children remind you of the partner of the partner yes. maybe the children remind you they are single parents who tell their children if it hadn't been for you i would have been a big success <laughs> if it hadn't for, been for you i would have gone back to school you are ruining my life that parent is actually crying out for help they are overwhelmed it can be very overwhelming i think the other thing is financially it can be very overwhelming it you is. can imagine on your own yes. you're trying to bring up a child you are stuck Sometimes you don't have resources, you are, you are running all over the place. Thirdly, sometimes you are the parent who you are, as you know, Jake put it so well. You are, the, you are the disciplinarian and then you are the lover, you are the nurturer. So you can imagine, you don't know when to bring on. Because in a normal, in a, if you had a, 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 you know, a, a father who was there and a mother, normally the father is considered the disciplinarian. So when the father brings out the cane, the mother is, brings out the carrot. And sometimes the parents say, you go deal with that. Now, there's nobody to tell you go deal with that. It is you who deals with it. You are actually the parent, as Jade said, on the ground. Boots on ground is you. It's you. Yeah. Other people can help, but you're the boots on ground. Yes. Mm. And parenting is a full-time job. job. Mm. So Jade will, say, will tell you she has, you know, young adults. Mm. But it's, it's still a full-time job. Mm. It is. If something happens, she's a parent. <laughs> or how kids turn out now. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that kids turn out in a particular way out of how they were brought up? How does it affect them? They do. Um, so I, I don't want to say, I, and, and this I want to be very... Either positively very, or negatively. So it's okay. I find that children from single parents who are brought up are very resilient. Because they come from homes where resilience is required. Yes. <laughs> you have to be a bit resilient to be brought up as a single mom. Eh? Uh, they are very handy. Yes. Yeah? They are most, very few will be entitled. There's no time for entitlement. Yeah. Everybody is on the go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, because the mom makes it clear, we are not wealthy. Yes. You guys have to learn how to take care of yourself. I may not be here. You don't have any other person. You guys have to pick up and run very quick. So they are very handy. But... On the other side of the, of the coin will be that they have a soft underbelly. Some of them have experienced trauma. 
some of them have experienced certain things that make it difficult for them to get into relationships because they're probably so stuff they shouldn't have seen. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they've been taken to, they've been uh, <coughs> hanging out with their dad who says things about their mother, or their mother who says things about their dad. So they've experienced certain things that perhaps they need to go for counseling. I want to, I want to, I want to get the, to the questions part. You have yeah. a question for... How do you handle? Uh, sometimes you lose it, you know? How do you handle that? And, and, and then how, do, how are you able to heal from that and maybe in terms of life bring someone in that environment because somehow you're entitled, this is my child, this is my child, do not, you know. How are you able to deal, especially the healing part of being a single parent? It's not a bad thing, but you know, the mind gets tired. How do you get to do that and bring someone in, like get someone in that environment without having like, you don't know what I've gone through, you do yes. yeah, you know. Okay, I'm being overprotective. Uh, yeah. yeah. When you're a single mom, when you're a single parent, mm. and you've been through trauma, you must first of all accept that you, are, you may be dealing with your own issues. You mustn't allow your issues to cloud the way you parent. Mm. That is so important. Remember, mm. you're the only parent who's available. You're the boots on the ground. Mm. So you must, be a, you must be a whole person. And that's why we recommend counseling. We mm. recommend that you heal, mm. that this is your responsibility. It is your mm. responsibility to be the best version of yourself. Mm. That you can't give to somebody else. You can't just say, Atia, unajua babenu, aliniwacha, sasa now I'm stuck, you people. Yes. Mm. That is, it is your responsibility to do everything in your power, mm -hmm. to be a whole person, a hundred percent. Before you then take on the serious role of parenting, because you don't want to inflict injury which is what many of us do. We actually inflict more injury onto our children and create a generational cycle. Mm. Because of not. Because mm. you yourself, mm. you are very angry, you are a very bitter person, mm. and now you are parenting in that state. Mm. We need a lot of time for, for, for this, I think, to, to just explain that. Yeah. I, want, I, I want you to talk about yeah, uh, the support whole groups of, because yeah. um, you, you're also a counselor. Yeah. Tell me about that. And also, Pauline, you can also mm. mention how women mm. uh, or parents or even men who are parenting alone can get like, a support, uh, support team. Yes. Yeah. But just before I answer that, just allow me, when she talked about, which might answer the question also, about parenting is about intentionality. Mm -hmm. So intentionality includes that. You have to heal. You must find yourself. You must fall in love with yourself. And you cannot be an intentional parent, single mom or dad, if you have not understood your values yourself. Because without intentionality is you passing on your values. Mm -hmm. So if you have not sat with yourself and understood what is this my belief system, why do I believe the things I believe, and what values guide my life, you will not be able to be intentional, mm -hmm. and then you will not be even be able to know which community are you going to allow your children to be involved in, because it can't be everyone. Yeah. So it involves being intentional. Mm -hmm. So even when you're, now as you're saying, how do you find the community or whatever, it comes from there, that you have known your values, like. I mean, I was a faith person, um, I love family, I love, you know, get together. So I would look for the same people who have the same values. I will not say, my 12-year-old will not watch GOT, please. So if I know Kwanyu, Muno Chingi, whatever shows that, and then they're not in my same values. And it's not judging you, it's just saying these are the values I want to live by. So find a community according to the values you that want you to live home. by and the belief system that you have. Yes. And then expand it. Do not have a community of only singles. That is very important because you also want your children to be able to see the wide, the different types of families that are there. Yes. So it's, it's important for you not to just say, the people that I hang out with, I want to see other single dads or other single other moms. Single uh, how can people reach you? Because mm. I understand you're authors. Yes. You're, so. you're both mm. authors. It's mm. such a privilege to have you on the show yeah. today. Yeah. yeah, so how can people reach you, Jade? Okay, my number is 0700-213030. Um, and it, as I said, I'm a therapist. I also run a community for single moms. We call it Single Moms Couch. And it's an experience I take uh, women, single moms, no dads. Uh, through four stages, four seasons of their lives that will allow them to be thriving 
single moms okay. and I do them every month but my number is 0700 I'm also on Instagram uh -huh. I think and oh. Facebook okay. <laughs> yeah. yes. well, I I have a book, I've authored a book called Fresh Start. It's actually an experience. Mm. Mine is longer than uh, Jade's. Yeah. Mine is a 10 week one. Mm. And uh, we are called Fresh Start. We are on Insta, we're on Facebook. My number is 0724353557. Uh, and we start our next experience in May. Okay. Yeah. So single parents can enroll. Oh, yeah. Single yes. mothers. Single Unfortunately, mothers. Oh, I have not yet. Yeah, we are look, by the way, we are looking for single dads <laughs> to because, write a book yes. or do an experience. We also need single dads to be <laughs> catered do. for. Yes. Do. You, Mary, how can people reach you? Um, you can find me on is my Instagram page, Maria Kibbs. Yes. Maria Kibbs. Yes. Yes. Thank you so Maria. much, ladies, for being on the show today. Mm -hmm. You've shared very uh insightful uh, it's been an insightful conversation and i'm sure a lot of single parents out there have benefited from it thank you so much for watching parenting today my name is rebecca Miruri mulure welcome to thailand carpet where we deal with everything you would need at home in the office restaurant and hotels we offer solutions to all your needs we have a wide range of roofing solutions tiles sanitary furnishing and interiors we have exquisite furniture elaborate dining sets and classic comfy beds. Our prices are affordable across board. Feel free to visit us in any of our different branches in Mombasa, Kisumu and Nairobi. We also do site visits and offer clients with professional advice. You can reach us on this number for the site visit.